Growing up in a Polish household, babka was a staple on many occasions, particularly Easter, but other celebrations as well. I absolutely adore babka, and I'm going to make one of my versions for you today. I have one and a half cups of golden raisins. You can use regular raisins. My mom always used golden raisins in her babka, so that's what I'm going to use. And they're kind of dry, so you want to kind of plump them up. So in this container, I have one quarter cup of plain brandy. You can use um, bourbon if you want to, or you can use rum, but brandy was always what my mom used. And the rest of it is added warm water to make two cups total. And I'm going to pour it over the raisins and give them a little bit of a stir. And then I'm going to put them aside until my babka is all made and risen and everything. And we'll add these later, we're gonna drain them. But they're gonna sit off to the side and get nice and plump and fat. In the meantime, on my stove, I have one cup of milk, which I have scalded. And scalded means it, it's not boiling, it just heat it until it gets little bubbles all around the edge. And I'm going to pour that into my mixer. And I'm going to add to that three quarters of a cup of flour. This is all the flour I'm going to use in the whole recipe. There's three and one third cups in this bowl. I'm going to take three quarters of a cup out and add it here. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of that aside. And now I'm gonna mix this up. get the sides cleaned. All right, that's fine. I just wanted to blend it up. Now, I'm going to get the yeast started and start proofing that. I buy my yeast in bulk and then I keep it in a jar covered in my refrigerator because I bake a lot. If you're going to use the ones in the envelope, you want two envelopes. Otherwise, two tablespoons of yeast. One tablespoon of sugar. This is all the sugar that's going to be used in the recipe and there's two thirds cup of sugar and I'm gonna remove one tablespoon of that and save that for later. Mix this up. And to this I'm going to add one quarter cup of warm water. You don't want it too hot because it'll kill the yeast. And just blend it well. Okay. And now, We're gonna let both of these sit for five minutes and then we'll come back and continue with the recipe. Well, it's been five minutes. I've taken my bowl off the mixer. Now we're gonna combine this and our proofed yeast. And you can see how bubbly the yeast is. It means it's alive and it's really doing its job. So we're now going to combine this with this one. I wanna get all of that yeast out of there. It drives me crazy when I watch programs on TV where the cooks don't use spatulas, and I just don't get it, because you really get all the good stuff out of there. Now, I'm gonna just mix these two together, give them a good whisk. That's good. Now, I'm going to cover it up, and I'm gonna wait until it gets doubled in bulk. It's been about 15 minutes, and our mixture is really nice and bubbly. It's very much alive. So let's start putting the bulk of the babka together. I have in this bowl 15 egg yolks. 15. That's what makes this babka so nice and rich. It's nice and eggy. Put that in a mixer bowl. Okay. I'm going to add to that two teaspoons of salt. And then we're going to put it on our mixer. And we are going to let this mix for about five minutes until it gets nice and light and lemony colored. 
and thick. The eggs have gotten much thicker, and now I'm going to add the rest of that sugar. And I'm also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is my homemade vanilla. And one quarter teaspoon of almond. Almond's very strong, so you have to be very careful. And just blend that up real quick. That's good. Now I'm going to take this off. And now we're going to add this yeasty mixture to it. Yeast is very, very fragrant. Okay. I'm going to put it back on the mixture to blend. Blend that well. Okay. Take it back off just because it's easier for me to add the flour. Now I'm going to add the rest of the flour from the beginning that I told you about. and mix that up. You'll notice I'm using a paddle attachment and not the um, bread attachment, the hook. We don't need that. This is a very, very sticky dough. It's almost, almost impossible to handle, but it really turns out to be a really good babka. Really blend that well. And now I have one stick of unsalted butter, which I melted, and I'm gonna add that to this. There you go. That's why you should have it on low. Okay, finish blending this. Boy, I really got buttered. That's okay, butter's good. I'm gonna scrape down the sides, make sure I'm getting everything mixed together. And I'm gonna let this mix now for about five minutes. And no, I did not forget about those raisins. We will add those pretty soon. So now, five minutes. It's been about five minutes. Now I'm gonna add those raisins in. They're nice and plumped up. This just needs a quick blend. And now as soon as this is blended, I'm going to take the paddle attachment out and I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and then we're going to let it sit at room temperature for about an hour to an hour and a half. I'm going to let it at least double in bulk. So you can see it is very sticky. And very eggy, you can, how bright yellow it is. Want to get off as much as I possibly can. Scrape down the sides a little bit. I can tell this is going to be a really good babka.
get a piece of plastic wrap and let it double for an hour or an hour and a half and then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. Our babka has risen in the pan and now I'm going to put it into its baking pan and what I'm using here is I guess you'd call it an angel food pan, one of these pans with the removable bottom. You could use one that doesn't have a removable bottom, that's fine. I just happen to choose this one. And I'm going to spray it with cooking spray. Now, this is not the easiest dough. Excuse me, I got the aerosol in my throat. Not the easiest dough to get out. So I have a thing of water here because I might need to wet my hands. And I'm punching it down. Whoa. Now, from here to there. Because it's so sticky and it sticks together, it's not like dumping in cake batter where you can just pour it in and move the thing and pour it in. It's so spongy. It's so full of life. It's that wonderful. This is going to be a very nice light babka. I, I can tell by the feel of the dough. And a lot of times it has to do with the weather. Although today is a beautiful day. It's cool, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, no moisture in the air, although that really shouldn't affect this getting all of it out so it'll be a nice big fat babka. And I didn't need any water for my hands. Well, I do now because I want to spread it out. Now what I'm going to do is this is going to be covered and I'm going to let it sit and rise again for an hour to two hours and then we'll bake it, but it's got to rise. Here's our babka. It's doubled in size in the pan. I'm gonna put it in a 350 degree oven and it's going to grow even more. It's going to be in there probably for 50 to 55 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. So let's get it in that 350 degree oven. Here's our babka hot out of the oven. Now it needs to sit in the pan for 10 minutes and then I'll turn it out on a rack and it needs to cool completely. When it's cooled completely, I'm just gonna make a very simple uh, glaze, frosting, whatever you want to call it. Just some confectioner's sugar with a little bit of milk and a little bit of almond extract and then decorate it with some cherries and some nuts. <laughs>